This interview is part of the History Heard project. The content of this interview may be used for historical research. However, no part of the video itself may be reproduced without the express written permission of an authorized representative of History Heard or Eva Shaw. Today is January 10th, 2010 at 2 p.m. This is an interview with Eva Shaw in Sarasota, Florida. She was born on November 11th, 1922 in Berlin, Germany. And that was the situation at that time. So we stayed in Germany, unfortunately, and for a time it was still pretty good. It had started slowly. The first thing that happened is that Jewish, first thing that happened is um, I didn't go to a Jewish school. I went to a German, but in, I have to say that. In Germany, everybody get, went the first four years to grammar school, and we had the same teacher for four years. Now. This was customary. Everybody had the same teacher. Now, I had a wonderful teacher, and she was very good to me, even when she knew I was Jewish. But if so, that was very good if you had a good teacher. But if you had a teacher that you didn't like that much, it could be difficult to go to the same teacher for four years. You know, you could have no choice. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I went to grammar school, and... Um, when I left the grammar school, it was just about, and then it started there too, of course, with the, that uh, people, Jewish teach, then that was before Jewish school started. But I, I didn't go to a Jewish school, but Jewish teachers were not allowed to teach in, in any public school immediately. They were the first people who lost their jobs were teachers and social workers and people like that. And then also people couldn't go on the stage anymore, on the public stage. And later on, they started some Jewish theater, because in Berlin especially, there were many means of doing things. So they had Jew a Jewish theater and a Jewish um, opera, you know, and stuff like that. So it wasn't as bad as for others. But Jewish teachers right away couldn't... Uh, couldn't go to school anymore, and lawyers could not uh, go to court anymore. And then later on came laws that uh, you couldn't employ a maid or a, a nanny or anything like that uh, if they were Jewish, if they were under, I think, 45 years, something like this, because they were afraid they would have an affair with a Jewish man. So they couldn't work in a Jewish household. And there, all these laws came along one after the other. And when I left, after four years, when I left this public school to go to the high school, we called it Lyceum in Germany, uh, that we had a, like a yearbook or something like this where everybody wrote something in. I mean, we were only young. We were only four years in school at that time, at the end of four years. And this teacher wrote into my book when uh, I can exactly remember it, I have it written down. But when things are good, it's easy to be very happy and there's a lot of sunshine. And when things get bad, that's when it proves what kind of a human being you are and you should uh, try to still live, live your life. and fight it or whatever. Something like this she wrote, I have it written down in a book, but I didn't take my notes out, <laughs> and which was very nice. And I remember that later on when things went good for me for many, many years, <coughs> uh, that this is, what, uh, this is what this teacher said to me, and she was just a wonderful teacher. And I went two years to a public lyceum, the high school, and then my parents said to me, and things got worse and worse, you know, the Nazis, teachers, what things that Frank told you happened in, in, for girls and for boys. But my mother said to me, if, and all these things were already enforced, that the teachers couldn't teach anymore and all that. So my mother said, if you're really not comfortable, I can put you into a Jewish private school. At that time, there were no public school, Jewish public schools yet. And then... Uh, you don't have to suffer for that or something like that. So I said, why not? It sounds very good. <laughs> so I went to that school, and that school, later on it became a, Jew a Jewish school, a complete Jewish school. But uh, 
in that school we were taught, and this is uh, we were taught all the subjects, but we were also taught that you should be proud to be Jewish. They t tried to install this into us, you know, to be proud and not worry about it that much. And they said the only weapon that nobody can take away is knowledge. If you have knowledge, that's up there, <laughs> and nobody can take it away from them. And that's how they educated us, you know, which was very good, because it made me feel very, very strong, because that was the education. And then later on, um, I went to this Jewish school, actually, until I left school. Uh, I never went into a public school, a Jewish public school, which were very good, too. And when I was about, um, and things got worse and worse, my brother, we lived in a neighborhood where, in an apartment house, where we looked out, we had a balcony, and uh, where we looked out of the window of uh, where we lived. And it was a very prestigious uh, area. First of all, uh, some famous leaders, assistants of Hitler, uh, lived in the neighborhood. There was Goebbels, for instance. He was the foreign minister, right? No, what was Goebbels? Yeah, he was the foreign minister Von for him. Von Ribbentrop. What? Von Ribbentrop. No, I'm talking about Goebbels. Goebbels. He was the propaganda minister. He was the propaganda minister, and he lived a couple of blocks away from us, and he had a Nazi in front of his house, all protecting him with guns and everything. And there were, uh, and on, across from us was the radio station of Berlin, of which I have a picture over there. And that was like the Eiffel Tower. Have you ever seen a picture of the Eiffel Tower in France? And the Eiffel Tower has a restaurant in the middle, an observation desk up on top. And the, the, uh, there were stairs going up, but also an elevator. And from our window, you could see that. And you could see the restaurant in the middle and the observation on top, and I, the reason I'm telling you this is on the left, this is where the ex exhibition halls of Berlin, where every uh, month they had a different exhibition, and during Hitler it was all Nazi things, and it was uh, boats and cars, you know, exhibition, and on the right of us was the German radio station, which is still over there, and this Funkturm, like we called it, is still there too. Uh, they just sent me a calendar from Berlin, and it's got this on there. So my brother and I would always be look out of the window or be on the balcony, and the Nazis would march around, and Hitler would go through our street all the time. He either would, oh, there's it, that's it, it's still there, and I love it. <laughs> so while we had it was the beginning of my computer, because it was one of the nicest things, and I was up there, and when I came back to Berlin after the um, mayor of Berlin invited the, the Jewish people of Berlin, whom they had mistreated so much, back to visit them after the war. And I went on that up there. And uh, once there was a fire there, and the, my life was around this. But downstairs, Hitler came by. And Hitler always came in an open car. Nobody was afraid like today, like a president would be today, to have a closed up car and all this. He came in an open car with all his assistants uh, being there, all the important people of his ministry. And they would, he would stand in the car, open Heil Hitler. And then they had a parade following him. And Jews could not say Heil Hitler. Frank says Jews could say Heil Hitler, but at that time Jews could not say Heil Hitler. Or if they say Heil Hitler, they, you would get persecuted in the street because everybody knew they was a Jew. So this went on all the time in front of our street, and we would try to go into a door of an apartment building, possibly, or hide or something every time they came by. But it was very dangerous, you know. And this is my memory of being terribly scared. Uh, all the time.